Well, good morning and welcome to the thought for the day from the Lady Grove Church on an extremely sunny and very warm Friday morning. Um, we've got our grandson Lucas staying, oh, stayed overnight last night, so um, you may have realised I, I often get my inspiration for these thoughts from BBC Breakfast, but um, I'm afraid it's Paw Patrol this morning, which um, wasn't so inspirational. So I went on to the BBC uh, website and this particular story caught my eye. Yep, Brixton Prison is doing a takeaway service. I think that's brilliant. You know, we, we often think about um, sending food in or sending parcels of one form in to prisoners to bless them. Uh, it's brilliant to think that they too are blessing the local community in South West London with apparently really good food. It's a um, it's a, a, a trainee restaurant that is sort of of international standard and obviously during the lockdown they haven't been able to have people into their restaurant and so they uh, have set up this this takeaway service anyway that got me thinking about prisons and the reading that jumped i suppose right to the forefront is the letter that paul writes to his friend philemon about her slave of his Onesimus. So I'm going to read the whole of the, the letter. It's not that long. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker. Also to Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul, an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favour you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more, Prepare a guest room for me, because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. And so do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. And apologies there if you heard the bin men arriving. 
and they usually turn up later. I thought I was going to get this done before they arrived. So there we have, I suppose, a, a little insight, a little story into one of the encounters that Paul had while he was in prison. He meets this Onesimus and whether he recognises him as a slave of Philemon or whether Odysseus tells him that he's a slave of Philemon and Paul recalls that he knows this Philemon and so sends this letter to say look I don't know what the guy has done but clearly he's in prison for a reason something that he did that caused you to um, have him put in prison but now he has come to discover Christ as his saviour and so I'm going to send him back to you. Obviously, I suppose he must have served his time. Um, but welcome him back as a brother. While I was training, I did a few placements in prison and met some really interesting people. Some who had become Christians in, in prison. And a lot who were searching because it obviously being locked up for well almost 24 hours a day gives them plenty of time to reflect on what they do and their, their life that they've been leading the one thing that prisoners don't have is not so much the pool because there are chaplains who who are in prison meeting them talking with them sharing the Christian faith and supporting them in, in their journey. The problem is most of these people who come to a faith don't have a Philemon to go back to. What they have is a, an environment that for many of them led them to, um, to crime in the first place. I'm encouraged by the restaurant in Brixton. I think that's a brilliant idea and I hope that that means that there are restaurants that are willing to take ex-inmates in and support them and help them to grow in their culinary arts and settle back into life. But it needs more than that. It needs people who will support them and care for them in every aspect of their life. course one of the issues is that we're wary we're wary of mixing with people who have done things in the past because well, what happens if they break the law in the future what happens if we fall victim of crime faith is risky faith I guess tells us that we need to look at people as God sees them not with all the muck and grime that has led them into the stuff that they've done and let's face it we all fall short of the glory of God we are all sinful just some people's sins are deemed illegal and other people's sins are just accepted by society but still frowned upon by God I guess what I'm saying is that we need to be more open, more welcoming, because when we welcome people like Paul was encouraging Philemon to be, that we will help them to change, change, turn around and lead a life that is more in accordance with God's kingdom. I guess most of us won't be encountering prisoners or ex-inmates today, who knows? But a lot of us will encounter people whose lifestyle, whose attitudes may not be entirely what we would like it to be. Let's take a, a tip from what Paul says to Philemon. Let's be welcoming to them and support them. And who knows what a change in our attitude might lead to, perhaps a change in theirs. Let's pray. So loving Father, we, we recognise that we all fall short. 
that we are all sinners. And we thank you, Lord, that your Son went to the cross, not just for the so-called good people, but for everyone. He took on the sins of us all on that cross and simply calls us to follow him and to accept his grace. Thank you, Lord, that by whatever means we have discovered that forgiveness for ourselves. And thank you that there have been people who have, have been with us in our life's journey, who have accepted us as we are, but who have been used by you to, to just highlight ways in which we need to change ways that we can come to know you more. So Lord, I just lift up to you today all those who are in prison or awaiting court cases or have been recently released out of prison. You know their life stories, Lord. You know what has led them to be where they are. Lord, I pray that they would encounter people like Paul who would talk to them of your love and your mercy and help them to discover a new life in Christ. We thank you for those projects that are doing their best to help people to turn the corner and live a better life. We think of the restaurant in Brixton Prison, but we know that there are so many other small situations and projects that we've set up to help ex-offenders. And Lord, we pray for more finances, more people who are called to take that risk and to welcome people, welcome ex-offenders and support them and help them to grow in faith. Lord, we pray today for the people of Greater Manchester who were given so little warning of the lockdown. We're conscious of um, the criticism hurled at them for not abiding by the uh, guidance, but also recognise that we still hear stories of politicians and those in places of influence who have failed to abide by the regulations. And so when the example is not set by those in power, can we really expect those who are supposed to follow guidelines? to do so. But Lord, we pray now that people would be sensible, that we would prevent any further spread of this illness. And Lord, we pray for all the nations that are battling with it at the moment. Particularly think of those countries who are so poorly resourced with musical staff and equipment and where almost catching it is almost a guarantee of, of death because they just don't have the resources. I pray for the many families who are concerned of either catching it or spreading it or just looking upon loved ones as they sadly decline. Lord, we pray that you would meet them in their anxiety and grief. Lord, we pray for our own nation. This weather does encourage more people to go out, perhaps go to beer gardens and the like. May they be sensible. challenge those who 
refuse to wear masks and stick stupid videos up on YouTube and Facebook that make claims which are, are just ridiculous. It help them to see the reality of this illness and the importance of making a few a few changes in their lives and a few inconveniences so that we can prevent this illness getting any, any more prevalent. We pray for the World Health Organization. We pray for greater support for it. We recognize it hasn't done everything perfectly, but then nobody has. We pray for a greater working together rather than nations almost in competition with one another. We pray for our own health service and all the, the work that they are doing both to deal with COVID-19 but also to deal with all the other illnesses, illnesses and conditions that uh, people face. And we pray for our families and friends and pray that you would bless them today. And we pray for our own day, Lord. Thank you that you hold us in the palm of your hand, that you care for us, and that you call to us, that you go before us and lead us on. May we be attentive to that call today. And may we answer when you call us to respond to the needs of others. And so we close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So enjoy today. Take care. Stay safe. And I imagine Lindsay will see you tomorrow. God bless.